and we're back hey welcome back everybody to 614 headsets we're your host donovan say hello what's up everyone good to be back coach sayers what's up baby back in the building back in it as we promised right we said we were going to take the 2023 season and break it down into four quarters and today is quarter one football's unconditional love as Tom Brady said, we couldn't agree more. We're in the thick of it now. We're through that. What we like to think is the first quarter of the season. And uh, before we get started, I just want to reach out to our show sponsor, Fundraising University. So Brent, Fundraising University wants to wish a successful and safe season to all the teams out there. Fundraising University is excited to start partnerships with teams at the conclusion of the 2023 season for football programs. But if you're a winner, a spring coach, and I know we had some people reach out to us, and I forget the guy's name. He's a baseball guy, I think, at Whitehall, and he was talking about starting his own podcast and liked what we're doing. Hey, here's the thing. Speaking of him, though, at Whitehall, I appreciate it because I'm walking out to the field. We played them. And yeah. I'm trying to get my, my guys all juiced up. I'm real serious walking out, and he's holding the gate, and he just taps me on the arm. He's like, hey, I love the podcast. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, dude, you know what I mean? Super cool, dude. I have another story for that, but go ahead, finish you, your. Yeah, so even if you're just a winner, or a spring coach, or you're an organization or something, don't hesitate to reach out to Brent now at B Maxwell at fundraising the letter U dot net or seven four zero five zero one eight nine four six. Tell him six one four headset sent you. We're not going to benefit, but you will. And make sure you reach out to Brent for everything. Okay. All right, boys. I am excited to be on and talk a little football. I think before we get started, though, I think we should definitely give a little update on us, how well, our teams have been. Scout, you look a little older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little cold. They got that first that stress getting you? Or let's go. All, always. I start losing weight like crazy during the season usually. Of course, I got my first fall cold just being run down. And you and my wife was like, you got to take better care of yourself. I said, I know, baby. I'm cool. <laughs> but... Thank you for mentioning that, Sarah. It makes me feel. I was good just saying, I, no, no offense. I was just always saying, good to boost self confidence. I always try that for you guys. How's it going though? How's it rolling over there? Obviously, your guys are rolling. How's it feel like? What's going on over there at uh, Ogahanna opening up at the new stadium? It's good. I think for us is that student yeah. section looked amazing. It was wild. They could have um, been louder. It was a little wild. All right, it was good. It, the coolest thing I'll tell you is, uh, first off, let's just go back, right? And we opened up on the road at Mason, won a real tight game, probably a defensive battle or on the defensive shoulders. They're a good squad, and we hadn't traditionally done really well on the road. In fact, I think that's the first long road game we've won in a long time. Come back, polish things up, have a big win against uh, Groveport Madison, and then played a really good Liberty team that took us into the second half and gave us everything we could handle there for a while until momentum really flipped. And it, when the momentum flipped, it was awesome, right? I think we went on to score as a team 33 to nothing in the second half. The stadium's awesome, man. But it was, I looked out to the left, I looked out to the right, and there were lines of people all the way to Hamilton Road trying to get in. Wrapped right around a half mile trying to get in of an amusement park, man. It was insane and scared the crap out of me. The second half, first touchdown, apparently we have that light show, right? It's like, <laughs> doo, 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 lights going off like crazy. I'm like, what? And then the one pick six, This is I've never seen this yet. The one pick six that went back to the house, the sideline camera, the huddle sideline camera that's mounted to the press box was just shaking, right? The whole play, it's shaking and it blurred everything out because that's how crazy and loud it got. So it feels good after a year to be home. It feels good after a year of being on the road to just have a normal practice schedule. Not having to start mm -hmm. at 4.30 p.m. and get out of there at 7 p.m. It felt good just to get some normalcy back. And I looked at it for the kids, too, to finally have an opportunity to play in front of their community again and to play in front of the student section. It was just awesome to see them finally get that opportunity again. So what do you think, Donnie? It was the environment for those kids. Like I, I try to imagine, again, for those that know, I, I got to play at Ghana. But even like past that, like if you guys think about being in high school, imagine not playing a home game for 15 straight games and then you get to come home to that environment but then to that game and how it turned out just like the like the epic feeling it had to that game but 
it's been good so far. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I had this question. Does it, as you go more into your coaching career, does it feel like the weeks just blur by and go a little faster and faster? Cause even this is still year two for me, but three weeks seem like they've gone by like that. Let's compare it to last year's like, all right, next week, this has just gone by like instantly. I don't know. It's a weird feeling. I agree. I feel like the football season since being for me, since being a head coach is like, I don't even get to see any of that. Like it's on to the next week, right? Like, you win a game, it's on to the next week. You lose a game, it's on to the next week, right? Every time it's just on to the next week, which is can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing as well. I've seen your guys' stuff, the lights from the student section, and then that looking was... at the game, it just looked awesome. And then i seen the lights that you were talking about, the flash and stuff. And that, that stuff was sick. Blue Carroll, I think, was like the first high school that i seen have those. Do but they? That is one of the sweetest things I've That's ever cool. Seen. It's pretty common down south. I feel like when I watch a lot of like southern games, I see it a lot. Definitely, it's probably going to keep growing. It's, it's really cool. They didn't um, tell us it was coming. I had no right? idea. No, it happened. I'm like, oh my god, we did we just lose power to the lights? Yeah, I had no, I had no idea. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. That's awesome though. I definitely think it goes by fast. And like you guys said, it's tough because. You don't get to enjoy it. You know, I mean, literally Saturday night is probably your only time to enjoy a big win, uh, to exhale. Uh, and then like today, all of us are back at it, putting together the next game plan, the next Skyrim reports. And that's why it's important, I think, at the end of the season, just to reflect and look back at everything and just take a moment to enjoy what happened. You can't because you don't really get to during the season. So Sayers, talk to us. Two and one. Should be 3-0 and as we've all talked together a little bit. Maybe that'll be the game, like you said, that woke your kids up. I know we had to go through that last year. We had to catch an L to kind of wake up and buy into some of the things we were talking about. Just tell us about the Vikings, man. Man, right now we're having fun, right? And now it's fun. Like where our kids are playing together, they're just playing so fast. Our growth from week one to week three has been unbelievable. Like as just as a team, their effort – buying into what the coaches are saying and being in the response that we tell them to be in it. And just a lot of the little things being cleaned up, right? Making sure that you're wearing our team color shorts when we say that. Making sure you're wearing our travel suit when we say to wear the travel suit to school. And those are the things you can look back on, especially when you lose one of those games by one point like we did week one. We had a senior that didn't wear our color shorts. One guy uh, on that Thursday at our run through. And then he didn't wear the same kid didn't wear the travel suit as well to school, right? And, and it's those little things like that. And, and even as we're telling this one, right, it's game day. By that time, you can't really do much, right? They're just choosing to do what they're, want, they're wanting to do. In the past two weeks, everybody's had the same stuff on. Everybody's done the little things, right? <clears throat> and it's paid off. I think for us, we're just super excited about the fact that we've gotten two out of city conference wins two weeks in a row. As in my four years, we haven't beat a team that's outside the city yet. And so we had to rattle two off. And last week, be at home, we were road warriors for the first two weeks as well, which I love being on the road anyway. But for us to come back home and protect the land, it was it was, it was just a good night to see from our seniors as they come together. I think the Whitehall game was super cool for us to as a team because we go in 22-22 a half, and we just came off of and a dog fight loss the week before that we should have won, like we said, and we lost by one point. And it was just easy to use that in the locker room at halftime to get our guys rolling. All you had to ask, like, do you want that same feeling as last week? We're back here in a dog fight again. And then our kids came out 28 unanswered, unanswered points in the third quarter, and they showed that they wanted it more. First week was tough, though, man. I, I say – I told everybody, I think that – Oh, man, I think that first one stung a little more than any other ones that I've lost yet coaching. And I lost one two years ago to our rival Beach Trout on a one-yard line to tie for the City North. So then we would have been back-to-back City North champs because last year we did it. And two years ago, we could have did the same thing. We were beating them the whole game, drove all the way to the one, got stopped, thought we were in the one, though, this year, that first one. I think that one stung a little bit more, and it stung the, our kids, but it was the first time we've seen our kids show emotion of losing. Like, usually the past couple of years, there's like, let's get on the bus. You know what I mean? Like, laughing, joking. Dudes are arguing, like, stop laughing. It ain't fun. You know what I mean? They're just holding each other. Like, it was just a different vibe, and then that whole week of practice was a whole different vibe, too. And that's, good, man. that's what we were happy about. But 
for you guys. This has been fun. You already know football season's been, it's a blast. It is. It's highs, it's lows, it's crazy, but that Friday night feeling, man, you just can't replicate it ever. So that's <laughs> awesome. That feeling in your stomach, though, like before a game, like the sweat you feel, like it's just different. How about college football, man? How about Coach we Prime? All say it, how about football. Coach Prime taking college football by storm? How about him? We don't put C's on that chest, D's and L's, dogs and leaders. Did you <laughs> see that? I love that. But hey, here's the other awesome. thing, though. He has another huge game this week, too. Did Nebraska, they right? Them? Yeah, like they can beat, beat Nebraska for sure. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You win a big yeah. game. But a lot of people were saying he wasn't going to win more than four or five right. games this year. He, I, I was, was saying that. Like, we did. We all talked about it a little yeah. bit. Wait a You, we you all in. I, hey, we, we it was a hot take. Thank you. It was a hot take. Was you say, you said we all did. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I, I was surprised. I was really surprised. What were you surprised about, though? I, I tell you what I was the most surprised about. How well his son played. You know, that to yes. me, 510 I yards. I never right? watched him that much at Jackson State. He was putting the ball everywhere, man. It was crazy to see. I'm a big fan, though, of the offensive coordinator. Is it Sean? Is it Sean Lewis? Yeah, yeah, I love Sean team. Lewis, man. Gap scheme, up tempo, awesome. Uh, a lot of swag. I, I just don't understand because you just said you barely watched him at Jackson State and you guys were saying what you were saying earlier in the year. But I watched a lot of the Jackson State games, and that and then that's why I came to that conclusion. I just look at the schedule. I just look at the. I, I think they're. I think when they get to the teeth of the schedule, other than it's interesting. Travis gonna, Hunter is that guy. That's what I'm gonna say though. Are you gonna be able to play him that much down no. the whole season? You can't play him. Maybe I don't know. Every game, dude had silver. Dude played a whole game in the first half. That's crazy. I don't know. They. I love Tom, that. I love it. I doubted Colorado because they had so many new players and like nothing against Primer. So like every. Like everybody knew his son was good. He was a four-star recruit, and he chose to go to FCS to play with his dad. So, okay, he could be pretty good. But then to score 45 like they did, I still think TC is going to be pretty terrible this year. So, like, I value the win. I know it's a ranked opponent. Still a big win for him. I love it. Is. You just, I love Prime. You are it's a, a big win. Leader, it's a big win. It's a you're big win. you're one of those guys that like, oh, it's a big win. TCU now sucks. Mm-hmm. Well, they do suck. TCU sucks. I thought they were going to win. I thought TCU was going to win. I thought they were going to beat them pretty bad, even though knowing TCU was still going to win. Let's not blame it on TCU. Let's just say that you suck at choosing the games to win. I'll Who's still blame win? it on TCU. Put it this way. Colorado, you know what? Maybe it switches my mindset of them around from being 3-9, and 4-8. and Are they going to beat Oregon? Are they going to beat USC? Are they going to beat – Time's going to tell because the original hot take was, would he make them bowl eligible yeah, I know. in the first year? We both said no, and you said yes. Yeah. So we'll see. We got time. What do we time. get? <clears throat> Whoever, what do we get for that? We can talk about that off camera. Come on now. Stop trying <laughs> yeah. to set me up. Come on. Put your filter back on. All right. All right but <laughs> hey, let's get back to high school football in a six Let's do it. Let's hey, get hey, it. What's the, what is the, I have to ask, what's the biggest win that's came out of a Central Ohio team so far? This year, that the one bit, which is the one that stands out to you the most, you think? Put me on the spot. If somebody else got some different takes, more players than anything. I had two, but when you say that, I got two. One was Kaufman beating Centerville week two. I thought that was a pretty big time win. I agree with and that. And then week one was Pick North going down to Elder and winning like that and that thriller of a game. So the I, gut reaction is those two. I think I'd have to agree. I'd have to agree. After being to the pit there and seeing what it's like and for them oh. to come on top is awesome for wow. them and our boys in Central Ohio. But I think those two, do you have something else on your mind? No, that was just a question that I had yeah. that I just wanted to throw out there to ask you guys. But I thought I, I agree. I think the I think Pick North going down there and doing their thing down there is obviously is huge. But also, man, I watched the it was close. That Wayne pick central game. Yeah was a sweet game to watch because we played Saturday that in week two. So I was at home watching a lot of the games and stuff. That was a great game. I think we'll get that one. So we'll get to watch it. So it'll be good. I took it from more of the perspective of some of the players. One person or one highlight for me in, in quarter one of the season, Kentrell Reinhardt from Bishop Reedy is putting together. <laughs> this, was this one of his before I got on? <laughs> yeah. That's great. But, hey, 
a Mr. Football type campaign, man. 16 touchdowns, 950 yards. Holy cow. Hey, dude, all, you and Donnie are reading my mind. Because before you get on here, Stout, that's who I brought up. That's the first mm-hmm. kid I bring up. Because, yo, that dude is really? going nuts. Insane. Those stats are – those are like NCAA create your own super player stats, man. That, um, hey, he's going absolutely bananas. That is, he is putting together a campaign. Like you, you do that through the entirety of the season, you got a great chance to be a Mr. Football for sure. What um, year is he? Do you know? I don't know. He, is he a junior or is he a senior? I don't know. He's not a senior. I'm going to find this out. We keep talking. I'm going to find this out because I feel. Well, like- you're looking it up and you're going to fill us in. How about Olin Tangy? Ethan mm-hmm. Grunkenmeyer and Olin Tangy look unstoppable. Yeah. Just talking with I, uh, the defensive corner at Westville South. He's next to me. We both teach in social studies department. We were just talking about it a little bit and just talked about all the weapons they have and the ability to run the ball too with it this year and looking at his stat line and some of the throws he's making. Shout out to Penn State finding the good Ohio quarterbacks and locking them in. Like what's you look at, what's it? How do you say his name again? Because Ethan, that was it. Ethan Grunkenmeyer. Big Grunk. That's what we yeah. that's called, the, the Big Grunk. And then Drew Aller. Like, Drew Aller lit Watched it up last up. night yeah. Yeah. for Penn State. Here, here, that's a fact, though. That Grunk Meyer dude is – he's tough. He's yeah, I've, got to, I've only got to see a lot of highlights. I haven't got to see, like, a full game or body of work or something. But the stat lines and what they're doing, hearing other people talk, they really look like they're a favorite over there in Region 2 when mm-hmm. I was just looking at stuff. Yeah. By the way, Reinhardt is a junior. Reinhardt, a junior. Yeah. So here's one other thing that I was going to say is, though, who's the best Who's the best 0-3 team in Central Ohio? I got to say Liberty. Uh, yeah. I, I read that their strength of schedule right now in the state is number three. So they, have the, they have the third hardest strength of schedule. I could see them being a team that just grows from that and down the stretch – keeping the culture together could again this is what they did last year they got off to a tough start last year and then they went to the regional final um who's what how many teams are in their region so are they automatically or is there 17 what's their region like i'd have to double check but in division one it's always been like just about everybody but two or three teams has gotten in obviously they're gonna get in like so they might go they might run the table they've done this a couple times though last year yeah Last year, but I'm saying I remember when we were at Pig North, like it's happened before to where we had beat Liberty pretty bad early in the year, and it was one of the years they went on a huge run. They still have a tough schedule, too. They've got two and one Owen Tangent Berlin, New Albany, two and one Kaufman, two and one Arlington, three and oh Hillier Bradley, three and oh Hillier Davidson, and then Owen Tangent Orange to finish it. It's a tough schedule for yeah. sure. That's, un- that's yeah. unbelievable. I, but they're good. I give them a lot of props mm-hmm. the way they came in. Their kids had a lot of swagger. They had all the momentum early. They were they put up points and they did a good job keeping us off the field for a little bit. And we had one, our first turnover finally early on too. And then, like I said, I think they'll have time talk as a group and some things. We challenged that soul and that heart a little bit about who we want to be. And all of a sudden, you, so I told our kids Saturday, you have that first half can hand a team, second half can hand a team. That second half can hand teams the potential of what you could be all year. Somehow bottle it up and let's do it Monday through Thursday. So definitely, I was I would say them. They're pro- I would say them. Anybody other got any ideas? No, that's, that's who I was thinking too when I was uh, talking about it. Because I had seen uh, Westerville Central's 0-3-2, but Westerville Central's always been a pretty tough team as well. I just didn't, I haven't seen anything with them. I was just looking at Joe Itell stuff. I'll tell you what I think is awesome. The coverage – in 2023 and i'm not going to give any free shout outs so i'm not going to mention your name unless you want to advertise (laughs) but all right the coverage has been crazy man you have all the social media coverage you have the people that go to games now and what's awesome to see are these students are doing stuff like we have a girl who's doing stuff for us katie bailey she's doing amazing i know pick north has the macy made it girl and westerville has the the zach ball media and i don't know is yours a student or no Mine's a student. Coach A is the best. She's got yeah. it. She's now nah, look. Coach A is about to have to come on here. I said we can do that, bro. Because Coach A is she led our team out this week doing our chant like them boys ready, like yelling in front of our kids, like our kids wanted her to do it. 
she's she's really became a part of our family there and it's been amazing i think the access of the coverage and everything has grown so much this year than in years past and has put out awesome content and hot take it probably won't be long maybe you see a, a whole show of a season on this on this something i think whoever's hanging around there all right i got some ideas reach out i think you could put out a whole show and it would sell like crazy I'm going to throw out a hot take real quick. Maybe not a hot take, but shots fired a little bit. And we've all talked off air a little bit. On the same light of how cool it is, like the coverage, whether it's from like the dispatch or like student newspapers or just other people, whoever it was on Twitter that you shouted out for like taking the pictures and like tagging us in their story stout. Yeah, yeah. Like those are sweet. On the flip side, there's a lot of people out there that – big social media presence. They toe the line and they just, they step out of the lane a little bit when it comes to high school sports and reporting and that kind of lane. And it's a little bothersome. Like you said, not naming any names, but I think as the season goes on, you're going to see it more and more. Plenty of it in the off season. And then you see it more and more. That's been my biggest knock thus far in this season. Yeah. And it's always been like that though. And you're never going to, maybe I just never noticed it until I started coaching it. Ne- Maybe. Never noticed it before I started coaching, and yeah. now I see it. And I, like, I think since I've started, you're always going to have the guys that know right. everything on Twitter. And it's real fun when know. people make the fake accounts, <laughs> fire coach stouts, and all the other good ones. Yeah. You know what and I mean? Like, here's the, It's just hilarious because those people have no clue how much you really do, how much you really put into it, that how much really happens that you do for the kids, that how – small Friday night can actually be. And I think that's a huge part that like the people, the fans don't understand is that yeah, Friday night seems big to everybody else out there and around there. But like our true goal and like coaching and stuff with these kids, especially for us in the city, I feel like trying to get them out of the city and get them to do something good. As you're seeing all the violence happening in Columbus right now, it's been crazy obviously with the youth, but like, Friday nights are literally such a small part of like really what you're trying to do through their journey. It's such an avenue though. Like sports, sports is like the last great thing that brings different backgrounds and cultures and just makes a family out of everybody. And I am a definitely different person for today. I think we all are, but just use it, use the system, let it take you as far as it can take you. And it's going to network you with great people. It's going to open up Doors is going to give you that lifelong discipline. Uh, I agree. I had one more hot take. It's something I, I was looking at. Some of these regions are going to be absolute bloodbaths down the stretch. Like <laughs> your region is going to be a bloodbath. What are you, seven? Region seven? Region seven. Uh, region seven brutal, brutal is brutal. Our region. Hey, gonna shout be out to my dude actually now, though. Shout out to Keener, bro. For real, Jake's tearing it up over there being 3 0. And I honestly looked at their schedule. They have a great chance of being a 10 and 0 football. Team. Somebody, I was, when I was at the start of the year, the dispatch, some of them picked them to, to win it. A lot of mm. people had Big Walnut. And then there was about two or three people that picked Canal to win it. And uh, he's Jason definitely a great job up there. And here's, they don't do a lot of social media. So they just coaches his butt off over there. That's a good job. And those kids have a great chance of being a 10 and 0 football team. I'll tell you what, if they keep winning and if Westville North keeps winning, who we talked about before the show, Sayers. That, was that game, game, what is that, week seven? It'd be a big game. Big we got some game. big games coming up. We're going to do some big things. Region three, Pick Central, North, New Albany, Gahanna, Grove City, the Hilliards, they are all off to a hot start, and there's going to be a brutal gauntlet coming up. These next Grove City, weeks. by the way, I wrote it down, 44 points a game on average right now in their first three games. They're lighting it up, man. They did last year, too, and then the quarterback's even oh, yeah, back. That Matthew Pappas kid, that's one of the kids. Yeah. I said yeah. So we're talking games here. Anybody else got any other hot takes from the first quarter? No, not from the first quarter. How about games? This next little segment, we want to shout out and tell people, here are the games we're looking forward to watching. Or if we could go watch them, weeks four through six, we would go. Why don't you give us a, a first one, Donnie? I'm going to go week five, New Albany versus Old Tanji Liberty. That game to me just screams just bloodbath football, like tough on tough, your culture versus our culture. And knowing even though those teams, maybe their record doesn't reflect like my thoughts about it, right? Like we just talked about how good Old Tangy Liberty is. And I still know what New Albany is like, even with their, I think they're one and two right now. 
that game in two weeks, I think could be – if I could go to one week five, it would be that one. That's good because I didn't have a bunch of week five. Sayers, what you got? That's where, for me, I had – I just got one that's – a little bit later, though, is one week later. I know you won week through the six, but Go ahead, I just Sarah. found it and looked. <laughs> my fault. I just looked. Just, I'm like, dang, that is actually week seven. Is the Hillier Bradley and Hillier Davidson one? Because they're There's both a- three and zero right now, and they're both rolling. I think they're both doing a great job. So that's going to be like a huge. That's obviously going to be a huge game, and everybody knows next this upcoming week, the Battle of Pick Town. Absolutely. That that's obviously a huge game. And that's not unusual. Everybody's going to be looking at that game. A lot of people after the games are going to be checking that to it's see. It's going to be a really good game. There's, so you've got. You've and got the, then, you've got, go ahead. It's Central and Gahanna. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a huge game, too, coming up. I don't know. You guys have a that's farm the, uh, burner every week. That's the due date of my son is the pick central game. So I love it. <laughs> fingers yeah. are crossed or fingers are crossed in this household. The little man that kind of works around and helps us out. So absolutely. The pick North pick central game is full of storylines, man. You got Rocco who started out at North goes there. Is this the year? This is a year that North looks like they have firepower together on both sides. It is a rivalry game. So it's always close. I, I can't wait section. to look We're at that. Who's winning the student section game? That's the big question. For I don't me. know. I don't know. I didn't realize they did that. That's wild. Talking to, after it's we talked to Hill Rich. It's a is it at it's Pick North this year? That Pick North. Not that it really matters in the end. Like it's all in Pickerton, but like it's at Pick North. I that think. sounds right. They were at yeah, Pick yeah, Central last they year. They won two years ago at Pick North, and then yeah, they lost last year. And then now, yeah. Yep. I had another Week Four game, and I also had the Pickerton North Pick and Central. I'm glad you said it because it opens the door for me to. I went deep to give some love and look around. Bishop Watterson versus Tiffin Columbia next week. Both mm-hmm. are three and zero. Oh. Bishop Watterson had an awesome season last year. They're off to a hot start again this year. Tiffin Columbian is 3-0. I think Tiffin Columbian has a D1 quarterback and a good receiver, too. So I think that's going to be a big-time game when I would go see. I got another one. We talked about Westville North, and you talked about Westville North versus Canal. Absolutely. Westville North versus Westville South, week six. Mm-hmm. Okay, Westville North beat Westville Central. Big thing in Westville is rule the bill. Okay? It's gone back and forth between South and Central for a while. But week six, Westville North has a chance to win Westerville for the first time in decades. And it might even be the first time they would beat South in something like 17 to 20 years, something crazy. Mm-hmm. So that would be a huge win for that program. And then I had down Olin Tangy versus Olin Tangy Berlin. I think Berlin pl- shows up for big games. They somehow always seem to come out on top in those Olin Tangy rivalry games, it seems. And that could be the big test coming up for Olin Tangy. So let me give a little shout here too, though. We haven't given a lot of city league stuff out here. So oh, um, you're supposed to be our representative. Um, that's where. Well, I got. Uh-huh. I was letting us go on our okay. run down here. Week six is going to be huge for city league north, obviously, because East High again. Mike Bell got him rolling yep. at three and zero, doing great things. We're hoping to win these next two games too and roll in there four and one at that point and be facing East. And so that's going to be a huge game, I think, for the city North is Northland against East. Absolutely. Um, I thought it was week seven, but I, I, that's week, six. week six. That's what I had. To, I looked at it. I'm with you. Are you trying to check me on my own schedule? Okay. Never know. No, but it's going to be a great game. And we're back at home. We're back at the land. And that's what I'm excited for. And then I got to give a huge shout out, though, to the Briggs Bruins rolling right now. 3-0 and as well. 3-0. and They said it's the first time. Uh, what did it, i seen it on Twitter. It's the first time in a long time yep. since Briggs has been 3-0. and And it's not like they're beating teams that are just joke. They got they beat Westland first game. Then they went and beat Whetstone, a city north team. And then they beat Franklin Heights, who has one win this season. And they beat them by one point. And they beat Westland. They're just finding a way to win. And that's a that's a huge accomplishment. And then you also got who else is? Uh, oh, Afrocentric. They're playing mm-hmm. great football too right now. They're two and one as well. But it, it looks, it, it's been great. And I'm gonna give a shout out to just Walnut Ridge for beating us in, in general. That, that was I appreciate them for that because that kind of helped us too. Because Coach, our Coach Black, baby. Oh, Kenny Black. Yeah, but he called a great game. And honestly, they had a great game coach, a, a great coaching and game plan for us. And they got us. And it was a tough. First week for us, we were 
with 22 penalties. It definitely improved. We, we, we did the seven on seven in the last couple of years. That was penalties. one thing I noticed is they were much improved from a culture standpoint and everything. Yeah, they did a great job, and their kids were they kid their kids didn't give up either. We were winning the whole game. Yeah, they just kept coming at us, kept coming at us. And okay, that's my one. So actually, hold on, that's my one shout out to a player standpoint, and I have to tell this story. You told me this. You got to tell it. Tell it. This is the best story. Okay. My guy, Deuce, is what they call him from Walnut Ridge, number two. He's their quarterback. And we were doing the offensive all-gas awards, right? And he had con- I had put something out about quarterbacks. And I had to look – I looked back, and he had commented to me and was like me. He had said himself for the quarterback thing. And I didn't respond or anything. I had just look, watched his huddle tape. Obviously, I, I had put Grunkemeyer, I put Brandon Ward, or guys that, and before or during the game, he's like looking at me, whatever. And then he runs down the sideline. They score. And he, I don't know, he was like by our side. I don't know how he was so close. He was like, Thomas, whatever. Like, I love that stuff, though. And he comes by us. And he was like, You should have picked me as the quarterback for 614 headsets or something around that. Cool. And that was like their winning drive, like right after the game or like right after their winning drive. And I loved it. I was like, I, I, I was like, I don't know. I was like, yeah. that's cold blooded because, you know, they go down score. He scored with 30 seconds left. He throws a laser of a slant for a touchdown for a two or for a two point conversion, but he scored by like a play action rolled out, jumps over our kid to score in the end zone. Like just a great game by him and he's a tough ass kid. And that dude made my made me laugh like even in a tough point like at the night where I was like we lost we lost and I'm pissed and he's like you should have picked me for the yeah crazy that quarterback and I was like oh wow I didn't even realize because you don't think, think, think about it in the moment and then the Whitehall coach had threw me off there's been one other coach that said something about the six one four headsets I forget who it was but it's been awesome I love this stuff I love that people are recognizing seeing it and listening. It feels good getting back on and and just Mm -hmm. talk a little stuff. I wish we could do it every week. We said, hey, our focus needs to be for these kids and on our programs. And so I think this is the mix of both worlds. And I think we got some awesome plans for the next year and then hitting it hard when, you know, whenever we are done, when our seasons end up, whatever week that might be. I think we got some cool ideas for that, too. Hey, I appreciate it. I just want to, once again, shout out to Fundraising University. Don't hesitate to reach out to Brent if you're a winner of spring sport looking to get some fundraising going off the ground for your upcoming season big game tonight lsu florida state who do we Mm. got who we picking i want to hear ryan say it first i want to hear stan go tigers i got i'm gonna say lsu as well what do you think florida state i I think florida state wins the ac this year i I, you know what's crazy i think both these two teams are gonna win their conference you're would you say colorado beats florida state this year if they played no you sound stupid. You no. stop doubting my no. guy. All You're right, a boom. believer like he these, told the reporter. Hey, listen, hot take. This game tonight, both these two teams will make the playoff. They'll both win. Wow. Their They'll both make the playoff. Write it down. Write it down. What is wrong with him? No matter what happens, winner, no matter who loses, they're making the playoffs still. I can't wait to revisit this one. All right, everybody. That's quarter one of the 2023 season. It is in full effect. Reach out to us and let us know if there's any other games you think we should be watching out for weeks four through six or what have been your favorite games from the first quarter as well. All right. We love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Spread it out. Help us keep this thing going while the season's going on. We can't wait to talk to you on social media or by next episode. See you guys.